Come on, autofocus. Get it together. Get your shit together. Nope, you're not gonna do it, are you? Oh? 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 All right. So in this video, we're talking about the Panasonic Lumix S5. As you can tell right out of the gate, the autofocus, not so good. You know, the reason that this camera piqued my interest was because, first off, full frame camera, which you know that I like on the channel, even though I don't own my own full frame camera, but I'm always looking to see what's out there. What's appealing about it is that it's full frame 10 bit, but also does ProRes RAW 5.9K out of the HDMI port into an Atomos Ninja 5. That's why this camera has been intriguing to me. So the S5 shares the same sensor as the Panasonic S1H. But it comes in a smaller body for half the price. We're basically looking at a full frame GH5, and it only costs $2,000. With that, you're getting 4K 10 bit internal in the camera. Granted, it's the 150 megabits per second codec, not the 400 megabits per second that you would get from the Panasonic S1H. You're getting five stops of in body image stabilization, two SD card slots, a flip out screen, and an EVF that doesn't suck. Now it's not quite as good as the S1H or probably the S1, but it's definitely usable for the price. Something I've always liked about Panasonic cameras was that they release their hybrid cameras, but they do it video focus first. So although this camera can probably take some amazing stills, a lot of the functionality built into the camera is designed for video makers. Also, this camera comes preloaded with the V-Log Profile. This is their full standard cinema profile that you're used to paying extra for, like on something like the S1. It's the same log profile that you'll find in their cinema line. But just like the other full-frame Panasonic cameras, you do have to crop to Super 35 in order to get higher frame rates, like 60 frames per second. But what really sets the S5 apart is the ability to record 5.9K ProRes RAW into an Atomos Ninja 5. Effectively changing this $2,000 mirrorless camera into a cinema camera. Now I'm not sure this camera can replace my Blackmagic Pocket 6K given that that camera is just basically designed for video. But this definitely had me intrigued and that's why I wanted to test this camera out. So the biggest problem for me is the fact that I use DaVinci Resolve for all my editing and color grading. Now ProRes RAW only works in Final Cut Pro and I believe it'll work in Premiere with the plugin. So I had to use Final Cut Pro to basically manage all of the ProRes RAW footage and then I would put it into Vlog and then export it out as a ProRes 444 file and then I could throw that into DaVinci Resolve. Now obviously you're kind of losing some of that ProRes RAW functionality when you're doing this, but it was basically the way that I had to do this since I do not know how to use Final Cut Pro. But let's take a quick break and talk about today's sponsor which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Now there are quite a few different topics on Skillshare worth exploring. Obviously film and video would be one that I would recommend to this audience. But a recent class that I decided to take was by Thomas Frank, who's a YouTuber, author, and entrepreneur. And the class was called Productivity for Creatives, Build a System that Brings Out Your Best. So this class was definitely intriguing to me because it's about basically creating content like this in an efficient way. And creating content like this is way harder than it looks and it's definitely never efficient for me. I've tried my best to kind of get my studio in order and put things on wheels and things that can move around really fast to kind of keep up the quality and keep it efficient but still at the end of the day I end up trying something new and I'm not efficient at all and these videos take a very long time. So in this course Thomas Frank basically teaches you how to train yourself to be more efficient in this space. But of course there's a thousand topics to explore on Skillshare. It's curated specifically for learning meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. I think the Panasonic S5 has a really nice image coming out of it. I even quite like the internal codec on this camera. It's only 150 megabits per second, but I got some really nice shots with it. Now, I don't know if I would use it on a high-end commercial gig by any means, but maybe that ProRes RAW would be something to consider. 
Okay, so I've set up a really quick scene. Um, I properly lit the scene, basically shaped the light to actually show you what this camera could look like in a practical shooting scenario, like I normally do on the channel. I wanna just talk about specs to actually show something uh, with controlled lighting and see how it looks. So here in my hallway, we have the Aperture 120D bouncing into the wall. We're creating a little bit of a book light here. We're coming through a shower curtain, so you can see. Now the other end of my shower curtain, we've got a three by three floppy, which I'm definitely gonna talk about in another video. So that's blocking the light on the side of my face, on the camera side of my face. And then this is acting as my key light. We also have a lamp in the background just to kind of show some color contrast and see what that looks like in ProRes RAW. But I put this light off because we wanna have this light motivated by this daylight look here. I'm gonna do a quick comparison with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. A little side-by-side -side really fast on this close-up. Best I could really do is just set them up side-by-side. -side. Um, we have the 24 millimeter F1.4 on the Pocket, and then I've got the 35 millimeter F2 on the Panasonic S5. Got this negative right over the camera, key light over there. I think why I'm so hyped on this camera is because that for the price of the body and the Atomos Ninja with the Caddy and all that stuff combined, it still costs less than a Sony a7S III. From what I can tell online, the Sony a7S III is like one of the new standards for high-end mirrorless cameras, but that camera still costs $3,500. So you almost have, I don't know, roughly a thousand extra dollars to spend on lenses and other gear, and you get that 5.9K ProRes RAW file coming out of the camera, that's pretty amazing. So if you're in the market for a mirrorless camera that can also get really high quality video, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend the Panasonic S5. Of course the autofocus is a little shoddy for content creation, but if you're like me and you just use manual focus lenses anyways, it's really not that big of a deal. As usual, I really only tested out the image quality on this camera, but this camera has a lot of specs. It has a lot of stuff jam packed in here that would probably make this the perfect camera for a lot of people out there. It can do 3.5K anamorphic mode. It has like a pan and scan function so you can actually do camera moves inside the camera. It has a bunch of functionality that I didn't even scratch the surface of. Well, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a thumbs up. That goes a long way on the channel. And if you love the video, obviously subscribe to the channel. And until next time guys, I'm Sintra Sakurai. See ya.